Ishoto do be under a yala. Imoko poso to Yoruba Baba Babe. Is a mandara yala Baba Babe. Is a macabata yala Bado poso to Yoruba Babe. Is shata yala Baka Mama Soto. Ibaka Baba Bande. Imandara yala Babando poso to Yoruba Babe. Nima Bravia. Ishoto Yoruba Baba. Ishaka Baba Bande and Narayala Babe. Is a Baba Kaba Sata yala Babo. Is a Mama Mama. Mama mama kababo soto yoruba pape isanda be andorobo shiti ki bandare yala in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus kama andorobo soto yoruba sita kabaya Hallelujah 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 Welcome, welcome, good morning, and welcome one and all those who are here, those who are watching by a stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Global Life Church. And I greet you on behalf of our pastors, Apostle Oral Hazel and his lovely wife, Pastor Everine Hazel, who are not here with us today, but we know that they are with us in the spirit. So we thank God for each and every one of you and happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday. I can tell you it's good to always, always, always remember what Jesus has done for us, not just during this time, but always. So happy Resurrection Sunday. And we remember today and remember during this week, we remember what he has done for us. I tell you, no one has done for us what he has done for us. He suffered and he died. He gave, us, gave up his life for us. But the important thing today is we can say hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen. He is no longer in the grave. He is risen and he is seated on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us so we can be joyful, we can be happy about what He has done for us and know that He is risen and we know what He did for us and through His blood we are redeemed. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's something to be happy about. It's something to give God praise about. It's something to give Him reverence about. It's something to worship Him about. It's something to thank Him about. He's an awesome God. He's mighty. You can't find anyone like Him. You can't find anyone like Him. No one would lay down their life. No one has laid down their life for us. No one has suffered what he has suffered. It may seem simple because there are people who had get stripes on their back who they had enslaved. But if we think of the magnitude of what he suffered, they, they call it a, a, a crown of thorns. I don't know how uh, it could be even called a crown with, with, with thorns. Because when we put a hat on our head, we don't call it a crown. So how can that be a crown? He is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. He is mighty. He is awesome. He is awesome. He's not just a word. He be standing in awe of him and then some. That's why he is awesome. He is awesome. He is mighty. He is great. We is, he is great. And we, we just give him all the glory this morning. We give him all the praise. We give him all the praise. And we just magnify him. He's majestic. And we worship him in, in that, in his majesty. That's who he is. He's majestic. There are no words that can even describe him. There's no words that can describe him. He is our all in all. So let us continue to stay in that spirit, the spirit of reverence towards him and know that his presence, we don't take it lightly. We don't take it lightly. Let us turn to Hebrews uh, chapter 12 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise this morning. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hebrew chapter 12. And we are going to read from verse 1 through to verse 14. Hallelujah. Father God, we give you praise. 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 Hallelujah. You can read with me. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners, imagine, against himself. Lest ye be weary and faint in our minds. Ah. Ye have not yet, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exaltation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, chasteneth and scorcheth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof are all our partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they, for they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the pre present seeming to be joyous, but grievous. And nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your, for your, and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be torn out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. That's the word of the Lord. That's the word of the Lord. We're going to follow peace. And when we are chastised, we know it's for our good. Hallelujah. 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 Let us bow our hearts in prayer. Hallelujah. reflect on what you have done for us. We are thankful. We are grateful. 
So even now, Father God, we acknowledge you, Father God. We acknowledge you, Father God, for who you are. For who you are, Father God, just for who you are. We thank you for what you have done for us. And we just acknowledge you for who you are, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. None like you, Father God. So, Father God, even as we read in your word, we lay aside every weight, everything that perplexes us, Father God. So, we come before you, Father God, reverencing you, putting aside every weight, putting aside everything that perplexes us, every heavy burden, Father God. We cast them away, Father God. And we come before you, Father God. Father God, when we lift up our hands, we lift them up to you, Father God. To you and you alone, Father God. You alone, you alone are our strength. You alone are our peace. So we look to you. We look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. We look to you. We look to you. Father God, we just thank you for your grace and your mercies, which is brand new every, each and every day. We just thank you for it, Father God. We don't take it lightly. We thank you for what you are going to do, what you have already done, what you are about to do in this place this morning, Father God. We just thank you. Thank you for the praises that would go up to you, Father God. Thank you that we can open our mouths, Father God. And lift you up, Father God. We just thank you. Things that we, we, we think are so simple, Father God. We can raise our hands. We can open our mouths. Father God, we just give you praise for every single thing, no matter how great, no matter how small. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you glory. Honor, we thank you for the word that's going to go forward this morning with power and might, even now, anointed, even now, in the name of Jesus. All of you and none of us, even in this moment, Father God, strengthen everyone here, Father God. Strengthen us, Father God. We thank you for your precious blood. We don't forget the blood, the blood, the blood. We don't forget it, Father God. The blood, the blood, the blood, it covers us. It keeps us from against every hindrance, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We will go forth with strength, with power, with might, Father God, because it comes from you. So we look to you. We look to you. We look to you, and we give you praise this morning. We give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify and we bless your holy name. Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Yes, he's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome in this place. He's awesome. He's awesome. Awesome God. Awesome God. Liandarara mama 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 bori andara yala bo. Shela mama mama derebe. Awesome God, how great Thou art! You are God, mighty are Your miracles. We serve the Lord of Your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship.
Your mind, awesome God. 
Everything, everything, everything. 
presence here right now. We thank you for his presence in the house. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to do something that we haven't done in a while. We're going to greet each other in Jesus' name. We're going to tell somebody that we love them. You know, we take life for granted that we will see this person next week. But I want you today, when you look in the person's face, you're going to tell them that you love them. Amen. And you appreciate them. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Why don't you greet somebody? Why don't you greet somebody?
Let the name of the Lord be praised. For he is good and his mercy is endured forever. For he is good and his mercy is endured forever. There is none like unto him. He is our king. He is our Lord. He is our master. Lord, how wonderful get to this message today. Before you today, knowing that I am where I am supposed to be in God's will, standing before his people, proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. I would be nowhere else. The devil is a liar. He tried, he tried, he tried. But my heart said, Oh, then. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Thought 
victory was won for them. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And as they mocked and as they rejoiced, as all the demonic forces, all Satan and his hosts of demonic forces and principalities rejoiced. And they said, yes, we got him. We got to run things in this earth now. Darkness will run and overrule this land. For we have gotten the Christ out of the way. Ah, not so. And so today I'm going to give you a story. As it's ancient as time itself. Of a God that loved us so much. Us that are so undeserving. Oh God, I don't know if I'm going to get to this message. But this is what it is. A God that love me so much. A God that love you so much. A God that, oh my goodness, where can even explain what he did for us. No sin for me. Oh, weak me. Oh, me that felt shot and felt shot. Oh, me that always need his grace. Oh, me that always need his grace and his mercy. Oh, he said his grace is sufficient for me. And he said that my sins he will remember no more. Oh, he said why at the east and from the west he has cast our sins out of his remembrance. And we can stand before him and we can come boldly to his throne of grace in our time of need. Yeah, God, you could get a God. What a mighty God he saw. Mighty God, we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They just not like him. The message is called, It is finished. It is finished, it's done, it's over. The end game already occurred, though that was the Avengers that they had the end game. The end game had called. And things are just being played out now, but it's already written. Yes. The victory is already won. Yes. If you read the book and you get to the end, every knee will bow. Yes. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And yet, <laughs> this weak flesh and this weak frame that we are in, can't get the full grasp of it. Mm. Mm. For the flesh war will against the spirit, and the spirit war will against the flesh. And there will always be that war within our body, within our loins, within our carnal man. So we must cling to the cross. So we must stand and we must feed ourselves the word of God for his life. And it will strengthen us. And it will sustain us. But we cannot walk away from the work that he has done. Because he has done it all for us. Amen. Where can we go away from his glory if we go into the depths of hell? He's there with us. We are sent into heaven. He's there with us. We see that pretty girl on the road and we say, say oh, she don't go to me because talk to He's there with us. Wow. We see some money somewhere that we shouldn't touch. We go and touch it. He's there with us. Prompting us, loving us kindly. Gently saying, no, don't, 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 because it's going to cost you there. Oh, he loves you so much. And sometimes we have to bear the brunt of the consequences, but he is still there with us. So don't run away from him because he loves you with an un, un, unexplainable love. Where else can you go? When without him there's eternal damnation, without him there's a hell, there is a hell fire waiting for you. You think that this world is it's just a bleeding thing in this world and then there's eternity. My goodness, let me get to the message. But this is just the reality of it. We get caught up with life. We get caught up with our situations, we want to get our degrees, we want to build our homes, we want to get a wife, we want to get a husband, we want to please our friends and have a social issues because we are social beings. But we are more so spiritual beings. 
wrapped in a physical body and this body will pass away and the real us will live forever and ever 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 the spirit will live as the body goes back to the dust to dust spirit to spirit and as the body goes back to the dust where will your spirit live in eternity that is the question that is the focus we must always keep our mind focused because that is the reality. Oh, forget the ism, forget the schism. Ask the Tokoka. Hmm. Run to your closet. I had to spend so much time in my closet, in my God's face, declaring and declaring, Lord, I will not. I will not forsake you, Lord, I will not. I must do your will. Lord, if I have to spill my closet, Lord, and just stay with you and let you love on me as I love on you and worship you. If I have to do that all the days of my life and forget about this world and starve, I will do it, Lord, but I must have your presence because I know his presence. I can't live without his presence. I must have his presence in my life. I don't care what nobody say, or what nobody think. I know my God. Those that know that God will do great exploits, says the word of God. Oh, still I can this I know my God. I know he lives. I know he's real. He speaks with me. He talks with me. He wraps himself up around me and he loves me like no one else can. How can I leave him? How can I forsake him? I go in my closet before I let man corrupt my spirit. And I love my God. Jesus. My God. Oh Lord. And I knew Sammy message try to me. And I tell the wife again, I'm already. <laughs> it's called it is finished. But first, I have to honor my apostle, Dr. Oral Hazel. And his wonderful, beautiful wife. As I prayed, as I sat in my closet, as I meditated on the presence of God as I speak and commune with him and as he speak and he commune with me see it's such a relationship that we can have and no friendship nobody in this world cannot touch that level of a relationship with the one and the true and the only living God boyfriend can't touch it girlfriend can't touch it wife can't touch it he knows me my inner parts and yet he loves me how can I forsake him? You did something wrong, your wife might pull you out of the house. The man might want to go on with you. God wraps his loving arms around you. My Lord, I place no one above him. You want to get jealous of him? I do want to get jealous because I love him so much. But then I love you. You just gotta live with it, but it is what it is. He's my God. And he's such a God that he can say, be your God. And he can love us all the same personally. Like it's just you and him and no one else matters. Oh my God. If I don't finish it, I don't finish it, but I'm gonna leave it. At time. So, my apostle, I was saying, a good man. And I sat in my closet and I revelate with the Holy Spirit. And it's so awesome. Sometimes I see things. And you know, as I stand here, I start, I'm growing and growing. And sometimes I'm getting to a place where I know to so don't say certain things. Not everything, you just let it come. You have to have control. Hmm. Because it's not the time, it's not the place, it's not the season. You just pray it through. You believe God and that's a sign of growth you know you get there and um, it was saying about my apostle it's been over 20 years walking with this man of God 
and, and in this house. Some of you are like family because we grew up together, we grew in older together. I remember the children, they gone off to school now, the big and they're out there doing their thing, but don't worry about them. We continue praying for them. Amen. You pray for them and I pray for them. You pray yeah. for mine and I pray yes. for yours. We you don't envy when they make it big. Yeah. You celebrate. Amen. Come on, saints. And we support them. Yes. And when they fall sharp, we don't blow in it. Look at her No, on. we grieve with them. Yes. And we pray them true. Yeah. Believing that they will be restored. Because God is a restorer. Yeah. And this is the spirit of God that we have to walk in. Yes. And if we're not walking in that, we have to get in our closet, get in his face and ask him. Ask him, God, to change me. My spirit, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, to be more like you. To love like you love. For God is love. Oh, my God. When are you going to let me get to the message? This God is love. So my pastor, my apostle, and I sat in my closet, and I meditated, and he brought him before me. We don't even know who it is we have to sit in this chair. We don't have a clue. Oh, how we take him for granted. Like stand before you even know apologizing, Father. For trying to take my pastor for granted. Though he's not a perfect man. But I can tell you he is a man that loves the Lord. And he has dedicated his life to the Lord. And you don't have a true the power. This man walks in. This man walks in power. When he goes in his closet and he speaks to his God. God hear him. And so we must pray for him. Some of what I got in that closet speaking and revelating on him. I saw Moses and I saw my pastor and I saw Moses and I saw my pastor. Oh, my God. oh how they tried Moses in the desert. He fed them manna. He spoke to the rocks and waters came out in the desert, dry places and he fed them. And all the day was murmur. All the day was complained. <laughs> God. My God. We don't know when our body is on his knees, praying, interceding, crying for us. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We, don't know. we take it for granted. He's a mighty, mighty, mighty man of God. So I found out my pastor and I must honor my wife. She had to leave. I wasn't even supposed to be here. But I know I'm in his way right now. A wonderful woman, a beautiful woman. 32 years old and growing in marriage. Yes. We had our kids and we had our kids and thank you. And such is life. We will have our kids and we will have our kids and such is life. But we love each other dearly. I got her back and she got mine back. That's right. And you're gonna trouble she can't. I gonna trouble you. And you won't try to trouble me because she gonna trouble you. And she quiet. You know, don't think she quiet. She in the spirit. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I see my wife say, move that window from there, the window blow it down, you know. I look at her. And before I could walk over to get to the window, boom, the window down the window. I see my wife, Harry Kane Marilyn, 
Irma. When raging, raging, the world shaking. Water coming in every place. He sit down like a crazy woman. Cause the glass shaking, shaking, shaking. And she, peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. And a calm came over. It raging all around the pieces in that spot where she spoke and said, Peace be still. Thank you, Lord. This is my wife. And so I know God is doing a work in us and yes. through us. I've sat in the closet and he's shown me things that he has for us to do. Amen. And it's a mighty work. Oh Lord. I better hold it like Joseph. I'm not going to be like Joseph and speak about the stars and the moon bowing down oh, and the pretty coat. I'm going, to, I'm going to hold it. Yes. Right. I'm going to let it reveal itself yes. in time. Hallelujah. Because I'm becoming more and more wise. Yeah. And I have to learn when to hold and when to release. Uh -huh. Right now I have to hold that. But you've shown me some stuff. Yeah. Anyways, God, it is finished. If you can put up Hebrews 12 too. So funny, my wife read a lot of the passages that I plan to read today. The same Hebrews. She sat in her closet, I sat in my closet and we wrote. And she wrote, and I wrote, and oh, we just God. stand up here and read the same thing. So what is it? So what are you going to say? But I got a little something else to add to it. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. That's going to be the cross of the whole of, of this part of it right here. Okay, but let me read the rest of it. He despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. When faced with tribulation in our life, when we are faced with tribulation in our life, we should also endure. You see the, the cross that I said there? For the joy that was set before him. He endured because he looked beyond the beating. He looked beyond the scorning and he saw the outcome of what he was doing and what was going to be accomplished. Yes. And even though they were beating him and he had to be in pain, he had flesh and human and it was pain. Pain like nothing else. But he found joy in the midst of that because he focused his mind on the end. Amen. He focused his mind on the end. And more so, we to do the same it's a protocol it's, it's an example for us hallelujah hallelujah as we face in tribulation in our life we should also endure for the joy set before us the joy set before us is even much more than the joy that christ had set before him to, to bring us in to form us and, and make us his family so now the joy set before us is to be a part of his family. So we must endure knowing that he have us, he has already done it. Yes. And there's so much he has done, it's, it's finished as the words. It's all finished. It's all finished. Bring up Isaiah 52. The New Living Translation. But many were amazed when they saw him. Oh, sorry. Oh, gosh, I don't have the verse here. Okay, let me just read it because I don't have the verse. I don't remember it right on it. I think it's 8 or 16. Where, where he was disfigured and the, the Isaiah spoke about him on the cross. I might have it on this other paper. But I'm going to read it anyway. When well, I'm looking for it, if I find it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That the name of the Lord be praised. It's speaking about when he was on the cross and, and the Bible doesn't do it doesn't do him. The, we saw the um we saw the passion of Christ where he was beaten and so forth. But it still doesn't do it justice. So I just wanted to get this picture in our mind. Just wanted to get this picture in our mind. So let me just read it because I can't remember the exact verse right off. 
Actually, yes, I got it. Isaiah 52, 14. 14, 52, 14. It's in um, the King James Version, they're going to say it different than this new living translation. But they're saying the same thing. But many were amazed when they saw him. His face was so disfigured, he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance, one would scarcely know that he was a man. That's the translation that got me. The King James don't really do it. Justice. The talk about vestige and all of that. We don't understand no more. But it's breaking down. This man was beaten to a pulp. He was beaten beyond recognition. You couldn't even recognize that this man was a man. The kind of blow they put on me. I'm going to break it down just like we don't talk here because that's what they do to our God. And they stand in astonishment, looking at him, quivering. Naturally, his body going to quiver and rithering in pain. And now you see him as a pulp. His face disfigured, his hands, his body disfigured from the blows they put on this man. This man who didn't do them nothing. He didn't do them nothing, you know. To hate a man so much. But that's the devil for you. You don't got to do nothing. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you and your family if he can. But God. Hebrews 10. Let me go through this real quick. Because I got a lot to read. But I think I'll go some of the chat. Because I want to go there by you. 11.30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Jesus, I mean. Hebrews 10, 12, my wife will read some of that, so I'm not going to read the whole thing over. 10, 12. Hallelujah. 12 spoke about, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin, forever he sat down at the right hand of God. That's what I tell you, it's finished. Ah. I could spend today talking about how they, how they drag him through the street, how they beat him, how they nail him, but I wanted to get to the end game. It's over. It's done. Yeah. He don't sit it down on the right hand of the crowd and uh, 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 on the throne of God. From henceforth, expecting to his enemy, we are they are going to be made his footstool. Hallelujah. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. We are perfected. We are already perfected. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the flesh fool you. You get angry sometimes and you're getting rage and stuff like that. That's just the stupid flesh. That's not the spirit man is already perfected in you. See? God. Oh Lord. I'm supposed to read out of them to 24, but I ain't gonna just jump because like I said, my wife, my wife read it. But when she stop at 24, something jump out at me that I have to touch. So at 24 she said. Let us hold fast. I'm going to read 23 to 25. And I got to touch on 24. 10. 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is fruitful that promise. And let us consider. This is, the, this is, the, this is it. You see, these are the verses that we don't even study. The little verse says that but they are the cross of all of this. It's the cross of our work yeah. as believers. Yeah. But we gloss over it and we talk about he sit on the right hand. Yes, and he ever he's ever in, 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 in triumph. And we gloss over this and this is the cross of our work. This is the cross of our relationship. The relationship, we have to relate with each other in this body. Amen. In this house, in every house. It is the cross. And yet, we ignore the cross. And we pull in our corners, and we sit in our chairs. And we forget the cross, the key for a successful church, for a successful body, for a body that is well, for a body that is not sick. This is the key for a body that will be able to be triumphant. It's a body that you will run to. You can't wait to get to. 
because 24 he go to Kata Kati oh Lord help me help me help me help me let us consider one another <laughs> when I read it just I were laughing you know because they got revelation let us consider one another you consider me uh -huh. I consider you we consider each other this is the body of Christ. This is what the Lord declares and needs and demands of his children. That we consider one another in love. In love. How can we forget that? We jump for joy at 12. The offer one sacrifice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forever he sat down on the right hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. My God sitting on the right hand. He's mighty, he's great. But are we considering each other in love? Then we fall in shock. Says the Lord. Because the days are going to get darker and darker. And are we going to have each other? They're going to hate the church. They're going to persecute us. And we have to have each other. I don't want to have to be in my closet alone, loving on my God, praying for you still. I wonder if you're praying for me. Mm, or if you're wishing some nonsense against me. We have to become more mature, says the Lord. For this is how the church is supposed to be. And we never focus on these verses. The Holy Ghost was signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle yet started. Oh, in the wrong place, forgive me. As I said, he said, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to do good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another. And so much more, I you see the day approaching. As we see the day approaching and getting darker and darker, so much more we have to gather together. Not forsaken, assembling each other. But what if when we assemble each other, we find more confusion? What if when we assemble each other, we leave bitter? What if what is Mara? What if it's not fulfilling you? What if it's not doing what it should do for you, but instead you're finding yourself beat down, instead you're finding yourself trampled down, instead you're finding yourself martyr, instead you're finding yourself put down, instead you're not finding the love of God. What if? Pray! Pray! Pray the church cannot succeed and survive if we do not do these things that the word says. These are the keys. Hallelujah. Let me read out on Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9. God help me. Lord help me. Help me, Lord. 9. I'm going to read the whole letter, but I'm go fast. So I'm going to stop here and there. Jesus. No, let me don't read all that. Hang on, happen. Hang on, happen. The Yabusti Tumbonga. Let me go to. Let me go down to. Okay, now I talk about the old covenant when they used to be in the, in the wilderness with Moses and how they used to take the lambs and so forth. And just how I the instead of reading other. And they used to bring the blood and sprinkle it and so forth. And now we have Christ that did it. We have Christ that did it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Trying to find a spot. And so he came. Let me go from 15. Verse 15. No, I got it wrong. Yeah, 9, 9.15. And I'm going to go down and stop somewhere along the way. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression that were under the First Testament, they were all called might, that which all are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. 
For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. So this testament and this argument came into effect when he died. Uh-huh. It's like when you, somebody in your, in, your, in your family died and they leave you a will, you don't get the money until they pass away. Uh-huh. You don't get to own that property until they pass away. Jesus passed away and he left us. He left us an inheritance. He left us an inheritance that's so great. Imagine his inheritance includes eternal life. But it goes beyond eternal life because it includes joy unspeakable and full of glory. It includes power. It includes so much. It includes authority. It includes our, our ability to go into the Holy of Holies. I'm paraphrasing and leave it alone because it's too much. It includes our ability to go into the Holy of Holies and say, Abba Father. Knowing that even though we may have felt sharp, he is gracious and merciful. I, I got to touch, touch on this one, you see, because, because our, our walk with Christ is a process. When, when we accept him as our Savior, we are justified by him and the work that he has already done. So we are justified in Christ. And then we go through a process called sanctification. And now to become sanctified is to become more and more and more like Christ. As we walk, as we read, as we study. And we fellowship with our saints and our brothers and our pastors and our pastors sit and teach us the word. And the word is green and fill us. For the word of God is like food. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds in out of the mouth of God. And how can this word be ingressed into your spirit, man, if you don't eat it, if you don't feed on it, if you don't hear it? How can you grow? The more you eat, the stronger you get. The more you eat, the stronger you get. The more you eat, the stronger you get, the you eat, the stronger you get uh, says the Lord. So eat my word. Eat, 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 and grow, 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 and eat, and grow, and grow, and eat my word. For by eating my word, feeding and knowing, and keeping it in your heart, you become more and more like Him. For we're striving to become glorified. That is the end of the process to become glorified. And we read in the Bible, and these are the days when we have to be like that. People like Peter, they were so filled with the Spirit of God, all they had to do is walk. The shadow of boom. Pass out. That's the Bible. People like Smith Wiggins' words. They were so filled with the Word and the Spirit of God. All you have to do is get on the train. You know, Smith Wiggins' word, when he come to our town to minister, and this is like the 20th century, or 19th century, exactly what this is. This is not biblical time. It's happening in our lifetime, in our time. This man would be in a train, and the police station ain't got no crime for the whole time he in town. He would sit on the train and people just start bawling, weeping, weeping. Because the presence of God is so strong in him. We don't have time for isms. I don't have time to worry about you trying to trouble me. I don't have time for I trying to trouble you. You don't have time to be like, oh, she thinks she this, oh, she thinks she that. Living on a carnal level all our life until we die. Not me. I will fulfill that which the Lord has given me to fulfill. There must be more Smith Wiggins words. There must be more Peter than Merlin days. As the days get darker, the sons of God must become more stronger and rise up and speak, thus says the Lord. Smith Wiggins word used to just walk and people used to just bow. And he used to do miracles beyond miracles. Where is the church of miracles? Where have we gone? Oral Roberts is gone. Benny Hinn is here. Not on the level he used to be, he was still doing it. The guy I used to go and, and listen to, what's his name? Maurice Sorello. He's gone. I'm telling you. That's why I can't turn back. Because I've been in the presence of God. And I cannot sit in a place and die. I refuse. I've been in the presence of God. And I just move my hand like this. 
oh God, the word of God says that feet is a substance of things not seen and the evidence. Oh God. I felt the presence of God so thick. You can't see nothing, but as you move in your hand, his presence so and his glory so thick in the house of worship. That as you feel your hand, you could feel a substance of touching something. You could feel the weight of it. And people falling out, people being healed. Where is the church? We don't have time for stupidness. We have to attain these things. This is the level that we must attain. Let me down, because I can get the Lord. Let me just jump straight to the blood. I said for you, good. Now you read that, they're going to talk all about what Christ did. I'm touching the blood quickly, and I'm finishing. The blood and then marks, mark with the declaration of Christ's loss. But you see, the blood is what that is. The blood is it. For life is in the blood. And without blood, there can be no remediation of sin. And I look at the word remediation. Again, we read it in the Bible remediation. What do I really mean? It don't hit you. So I got when, and I, 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 I said, let me see the, what the dictionary is saying about this. Remission, I mean. Without blood, there can be no remission of sin. What does that really mean? Remission is saying the cancellation of a debt, a charge or a penalty. So by the blood of Jesus, our debt was cancelled. The charge is against us by the demoniac was cancelled. The penalty that he had, the right he had to come and own us and destroy us was cancelled by the blood. Okay? I'm going to touch on Colossians after my Lord, but I'm just touching this one for the sake of time. Time running out on me, my God. And Colossians is so sweet, I gotta touch on that. Colossians 14 15. Quickly. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us and took it out of the way, kneeling it to the cross. This is the bad that's with me. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That's what Christ do. Listen to the new international version of it. Having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, the cross which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them. By the cross. Lead us amen. You know what I'm saying? Christ went down into Hades. And Satan and all his demonic forces jump on him. Tell they had him beat. And they don't get this vision. They got Christ down and they go, use and use and millions and millions of demons beating on him. And here goes Christ. Yes, Send all demonic forces flying. Let them asunder, grab Satan by his throat, took the keys of death, took the keys of hell, took the keys of the grave, and went back up into heaven with it. Before he went back up into heaven, he took all of Satan's minions and Satan himself, and he parried them throughout the universe in the spiritual realm, and he said, look at them. I have defeated them. Hallelujah. And so they know, every demon know. But he don't want you to know, but now you know. We know that he know. That I know that you know. And he don't want you to know, but we now know that Jesus Christ has triumphant. He is king and his Lord, and he has made a public spectacle of them. And so when we stand against the manic force, we stand on that authority. Hallelujah. Let me get to the end. That's what more talking about hell and how you do with hell. The work is finished, it's finished. You don't do it. We're going to end, we going to end on Mark 16. Mark 16. My God. Mark 16. Hallelujah. And so at Mark 16, down to the end, which is 20, he gave us our marching order before he left. And he said, 
Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's why I know I'm in the will of God right now. Even though I had so much to do and I didn't need to be in the car, I got this going on and I really need to be where I need to be. But I will, I have to be. I will God want me to be. Proclaiming that says the Lord and somebody is being touched today. And somebody is getting a deeper and a sweeter revelation of this God that we serve. And what more can I do? What can be more important than that in this life? Nothing. We're talking about life eternal. We're talking about the God that created this world. Oh my God, let me tell you because I uh, uh, got myself in it before 12. Hallelujah. So he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Oh, there are some that won't believe. Oh, there are some that are going to make the alliances to Satan. They are going to sit and they're going to try witchcraft. They're going to try charm. They're going to try incantation. They're going to form the circle that they're going to chant against you. They're going to chant against your children. They're going to try to bring the destruction on you because they hate the Lord. And there's nothing that the God do and change them and they do exist but we stand firm knowing that we are more mighty and more powerful and no curse can stand against us for Jesus Christ became a curse on the tree so that we can be blessed and we are blessed and we are highly favored and so we come against any curse we come against the oh Lord oh Lord Oh Lord, I gotta finish, Lord. I gotta finish, Lord. You send me the book. I gotta finish. But I have to go because you send me. Oh God, I have to go because you send me. And so I come against every curse. I come against every witchcraft spirit. I come against every necromancer. I come against the truth sayers. I come against married spirits. In the name of the Lord, by the blood of Jesus, I beat you down out of this church. I beat you down out of the children of God. I beat you down out of a global life church. I beat you down out of our children's children. And I declare and I decree that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I condemn every wicked tongue that rises up against us even now. And I declare and I decree that the plans and the purposes that the Lord of sets will for us shall come to pass. A mighty army being formed in this house under the guidance of, of our apostle. We call our apostle. We call our apostle. We call our apostle a mighty man of God. We call him a demon buster. I thank you, Lord, for the gifts of the Spirit moving in his life. For the gifts of his heart, oh, Lord God. That healing will take place in his life. That he will walk in the gifts of healing. That he will walk in the gifts of miracles. That he will walk in the gifts of prophecy. That he will walk in all the gifts of the Spirit. That he will walk in the gifts of faith. Oh, we speak it forth unto our pastor. We speak it forth unto our pastor. And as he goes, so goes us. Says the Lord. Says the Lord. And let me down. Let me down, Lord. Let me down, Lord. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he would receive them into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Can I have an arm, man? Amen. 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 Thank you, Father God, that I have fulfilled the assignment which you have given me this morning. I pray, Lord God, that hearts will turn, spirits will change, chains will broken, and I just glorify you and thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.
author for delivering the word of God to us. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Day and take the body and blood of Jesus Christ on the day when many people around the world are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Had he not been beaten, had he not died, we could not celebrate today. So I want you to get out your bread and we're going to commune together. Amen. Glory to God. Let us break it as a symbolism that his body was broken for us, that he was bruised, and because of this brokenness, we can receive healing in our body, we can receive relationship with him, amen, because he was bruised, he didn't have to do it. The Bible says he could have called 10,000 angels, he could have called one angel, and they would have taken care of the job, but he died alone on a rugged cross. For you and for me. So today as we remember his sacrifice, let us eat the bread together and thank him. Glory to God. The blood of Jesus. Sometimes we, when we get in a pickle, when we get in a tight situation, we say, the blood, the blood, the blood. Amen. But the blood of Jesus is so strong. And it's so, the Bible says, efficacious, which means it's available for us, for our children. It's not only for sickness that you take the blood. You commune. The Bible says, do this in remembrance of me. So when you want to remember Jesus, you take the blood. And you take the bread. You remember him. Remember the sacrifice that he said, remember him. Then he sups with you and you sup with him. It's a two-way street, amen? So let us take the blood into our bodies as we remember what he did for us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the body of Jesus, which was broken for us. Father God, you said that this was a cup of blessing. So as we drank today, we drank in a new level of blessing. Thank you, Father, for this time that we can commune with our brothers and our sisters. And even as the men of God preached today, that we provoke each other to love and to good works. Father, because Jesus did it because he loved us. And so we pray there, God, that love is shed right in our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you. We can't thank you enough. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I want you to take out your gift and your seed. Some of us are tithing. That's the 10%. Amen. Oh. <laughs> That's 10% of your earnings. And it's not only your what you made at your job. Maybe somebody blessed you. You get 10% of that. All that you get in, 10% and we're going to give today. Amen. And for those who weren't paid or who didn't get a gift, your offering, you're going to give a seed of love to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So if you have your offering prepared, this is a going to come and serve you. You can give by way of uh, PayPal as well. PayPal.me slash Global Life Church. Amen. You can give uh, by way of uh, credit card, debit card in the back. Brother Rule is there to serve you. If you have a card, please go to the back and he's right there to serve you. Glory to God. You can give by check or cash. And we will process your gifts of love to the Lord. Amen. his lordship in our lives as you go today you celebrate with your family some of you are having family gatherings remember jesus as they say in christmas jesus is the reason for the season so don't just eat your turkey and your 
Ah, uh, your sauce and your macaroni and cheese. Remember Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's a good one. Father, we thank you for the seeds of love that were sown today. We thank you for those who tithe. We ask God that you will bless them, good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Allow men and women to give into their lives. I speak abundance over each person in this house. I speak no lack. I declare that lack is broken from our lives in Jesus' name, and we walk in supernatural abundance in this house. And I thank you right now, Father God, that every need that is represented in this house is met in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I pray, God, that you will multiply the seeds that were sown in the mighty name of Jesus. And let the church say amen. amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. The announcements for this week is on Wednesday, we have um, Bible study online, and then on uh, Friday morning at uh, 6.30, we have prayer, and those are the, the numbers, amen, you can share those numbers with a friend, if your friend wants to join the prayer um, in the morning, share that with them, amen, glory to God, let's all stand to be dismissed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to call on um, Minister Iona to close us out in prayer. And to bless our week. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you. God, we thank you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you today for this day, oh God, that we have never seen before and we will never see again. We are grateful. Lord God, we thank you for the word that was given to us today, the rhema. Lord God, it is finished. We rejoice today because it is finished. We serve a risen Savior, God, who died for the remission of our sins. And we are grateful. So God, today as we go celebrating for the rest of our lives, not just for this week, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that we are, you are with us. Because yeah. your promises are yeah, and amen. And you promise you're going to never leave us nor forsake us. So God, we choose, Father, to stay in your presence where there's fullness of joy. So we thank you, oh God. We bless you, God. And we pray that lives were saved today. Lives were rededicated. Lives were healed. Father God, lives, Father God, will change and people will never, we will never be the same again because of the sacrificial Lamb of God. So God, as we go on our highway and our byways to our various destinations, we thank God that your angels are encamped round and about us. And until we meet again, Father, as I said before, we're going to stay in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen.